One of New Mexico's strangest crime stories may have ended in Idaho, or maybe not. It centers on the leader of a 1960s hippie commune near Albuquerque. He was a colorful guy with a famous name who was never seen as a threat until he killed two people. Tonight, Dean Staley is on special assignment to find out whatever happened to Ulysses S. Grant. America in the 1960s, a time of revolution, a period of questioning the rules, exploring new ways to live. Here in New Mexico, the counterculture of the 60s found a home just outside of Albuquerque. Long before high-end houses dotted the hilltops of Placidas, this town played host to a long list of hippie communes. There was a joy in discovering that people could live differently than how they'd been brought up, that there was a different way to interact with people, that one could get their hands in the earth and grow things. Quite a lot going on. Tony Hull is researching the history of the Placidas communes. You know, there he is again. Including a man who, to the rest of New Mexico, came to represent the free thinkers of the time. His name was Donald Wosky, and he moved to Placidas from Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco. Wosky was better known as Ulysses S. Grant. And it wasn't just a name change. Uh, he believed that he was the reincarnation of Ulysses S. Grant. And I'm told that he even went to the government and insisted on, on getting his pension. So he had some degree of belief in this. In fact, Ulysses II wore Civil War style pants, rode a white horse, and in 1970 even ran for governor. Ulysses was captured on film at the Lower Farms Commune in this low budget, documentary style movie. Too much. You guys just came to town, huh? How'd you get here? I always saw Friedman uh, hitchhiking on the road. Yeah, too yeah. much with his bag of weed. Yeah. <laughs> the truth of Ulysses S. Grant is complicated. He was an outspoken defender of the communes, and he fought against people who tried to kick them off the land. He was colorful and uh, didn't mind the spotlight. Photographer Roberta Price captured this iconic picture of Ulysses. Is this a picture yeah. you're talking about? As part of a project to document communes around the West. Well, certainly he was someone who demanded your attention, but I think there were other people there who weren't, didn't particularly regard him as a leader and sort of were tolerant of him. And that may have been his undoing. In November of 1970, Ulysses had a run in with two men in the commune. He accused them of trespassing and stealing. It all came to a head on the evening of December 1st. Ulysses shot both men with a rifle just a half mile from the commune. That's when Ulysses S. Grant joined the ranks of more famous New Mexico outlaws like Billy the Kid, a killer on the run. He's largely regarded to be a sociopath and a very difficult person, um, but there are also people that found him um, um, Part of, the, part of their strength and part of what was called the movement then. The FBI searched for Ulysses for nearly two decades. Though there were sightings, the mystery endured. But that mystery ended 18 years and more than a thousand miles away. Two bodies found in the remains of a ranch house fire in northern Idaho, shot to death, then burned. Dental records positively identified Donald Wosky and his wife Helen. On that ranch, a massive booby-trapped pot grow operation worth $20 million a year. The former Donald Wosky turned Ulysses S. Grant had finally been found. But like any good mystery, this one dies hard. I also heard there are some people that believe that really he wasn't and he's still out there. <laughs> Maybe he's back in Haight-Ashbury where he came from. We just don't know. On special assignment, Dean Staley, KRQE News 13. He was quite a guy, and he did get a lot of attention around here. Photographer Roberta Price published her pictures of the communes in a book called Across the Great Divide. You can find a link to it on our website. Just go to krqe.com.